Good afternoon, I'm Kristen Pizant. I'm a medical nutrition therapist specialist at the Nebraska Medical Center. I work in neurological sciences, including the Epilepsy Center. And today I'm gonna to talk about a couple of the most commonly used diet therapies to help address um, nutrition in those people that have epilepsy or seizure disorders. The two most commonly used diets are the ketogenic diet and the low glycemic index treatment. The ketog I'm gonna just touch on some key points on the interest in time, um, and you're more than welcome to chime in at any time with any questions. So first we'll start with the ketogenic diet. Now, I guess before going into details, the ketogenic diet and the low glycemic index treatment, um, the mechanisms for the impact on seizure reduction using either of these diets is not exactly known. The premise though, both is that carbohydrate fuels the brain. So by altering carbohydrate, whether it's quantity or the quality of carbohydrate, you can impact neurotransmitters within the brain, which then has an impact on hopefully reducing incidence of seizure. So the ketogenic diet is the oldest and probably the most familiar to the majority of people. And the ketogenic diet is primarily used in pediatric populations. It has not been studied with adult populations and as um, far as I know, it has not been used. The ketogenic diet is very restrictive. It primarily, it, it really severely limits carbohydrate down to 4% of your calorie intake for the day. Now 90% of your calorie intake comes from fat and then the remainder 6% comes from protein. So in review, that's 90% fat, 6% protein, and only 4% of your calorie intake comes from carbohydrates. So that pretty much puts the, since carbohydrate is a primary fuel for the brain, it starves the brain and fuels on what are called ketones, and that's where it gets the name, the ketogenic diet. Now, there are several risk factors associated with the ketogenic diet, and it requires very close monitoring. The ketogenic diet should not be initiated outside of a hospital setting because it, they do need to be monitored very closely, and that close monitoring needs to continue with regular routine follow-ups until the patient has stabilized as far as electrolytes and different laboratory values. Now, some of the health risks that are associated with the ketogenic diet, being as restrictive as it is, and since it is used primarily with pediatric patients, are impacts on growth, um, dehydration, some nausea, vitamin and mineral deficiencies. There, those are just a few of the most common and, and, and very severe side effects that need to be monitored for very closely. Now, in contrast to that, the low glycemic index treatment focuses not on restricting carbohydrate, but more on the quality of the carbohydrate. So between these two diets, what research has showed is that one consistent um, consistency across both diets that um, was found to occur when in patients that did have a reduction in seizure activity is that the blood glucose values stayed very stable and that was typically in the range of 80 to 100 and so the low glycemic index treatment or diet was first developed for those with diabetes to help them obtain better glucose control and also for weight loss um, strategies and primarily for the same reason is it um, the stable blood glucose helps keep a person feel full for longer so a lot of these people were losing weight without necessarily just by altering the types of foods they were eating not necessarily restricting their intake so much um, now how this works with the glycemic index is like I said it keeps the carbohydrate consistent so the glycemic index revert, refers to the rate at which a food or liquid impacts the blood glucose value. It's ranked on a scale of a zero to a hundred and foods and liquids are tested and then they are given a glycemic index value 
and zero being the lowest value, meaning it has no impact on blood glucose values, 100 being the highest value, such as white flour or pure sugar, meaning it has the greatest impact on blood glucose value. So then 50 is where we meet right in the middle, and if a food or beverage has a glycemic index less than 50, it's considered to be low. And so that is our goal, to consume as many carbohydrates with a low glycemic index value to try and keep the blood glucose level stable. Now, as I mentioned, um, the glycemic index pertains to carbohydrates. So foods that are primarily protein, be it beef, pork, poultry, fish, eggs, those have a glycemic index of zero, meaning they do not impact the blood glucose value. Now also fat, so oils, margarines, mayonnaise, have the glyc cream is another example, has a glycemic index value of zero because it is pure fat. So once again, it does not impact the blood glucose level. Now some foods that do have carbohydrate, but they are primarily, or have a good amount of protein um, included with them, so for example, dairy, milk, yogurt, cheese, cottage cheese. These foods, the carbohydrate that's found in them, in them is natural. So in dairy products, lactose is a natural sugar. So that combined with the protein helps keep the glycemic index value low. The same goes for um, a lot of fruit. So for example, fruit is known to be a carbohydrate, but the sugar, the fructose, is a naturally occurring sugar, and therefore the glycemic index value for most fruits, most natural fruits, is going to be low. Now there are some exceptions, um, same with vegetables. The majority of vegetables are going to be low, but there are some specifics that um, are digested differently and therefore have a higher glycemic index. Now, generally speaking, to get as many low glycemic index choices as possible, you want to stay with fresh, unprocessed foods. Whole grain becomes very important. When a body is digesting a whole grain, it has to work hard to peel and break down several different layers before that food is completely digested. Whereas a grain that's been processed has already had that done by the machines are as part of the processing or refining process. So those foods that are processed are going to have a higher glycemic index value. So I reviewed a few foods that are low in glycemic index, the meat, the eggs, the dairy, fruits, majority of fruits and vegetables. Some whole grains to consider would be 100% um, whole grain bread is acceptable, but it needs to be 100% whole grain. Another one is basmati rice is a whole grain. Quinoa is a whole grain, whereas white rice and even brown rice are refined and processed enough that they have a high glycemic index. Sweet potatoes are low glycemic index food, um, along with the majority of squashes, um, but surprisingly, even though sweet potatoes are low, white potatoes are high, so that's really the one vegetable you need to stay away from when following a low glycemic index diet. Now, the good thing about the low glycemic index treatment is that it can be instituted, initiated at home. It's a healthy diet for everyone to follow, so there really are no health risks associated. We're not eliminating any food groups. We're not restricting any food groups. We're just focusing on making those carbohydrate choices that are of higher quality. Um, higher quality meaning whole grains, they take the body longer to digest and therefore keep the blood glucose value stable and have a low glycemic index. That's just a very brief overview of the two different diets and I would like to open it up right now for any questions. And while you think about your questions or while you're typing, um, I can talk about a few questions that are commonly asked of me when I do counsel patients and families on the glycemic index, which is the diet therapy that we use here at the Nebraska Medical Center. 
A lot of times people ask if a food is high in fiber, does that mean that it has a low glycemic index? And this is a, a very good point that I would like to make because fiber became very trendy and it was a marketing strategy that was used um, once fiber was associated with helping a lot of people lose weight and to help keep blood glucose stable. However, there are different types of fiber and there's naturally occurring fiber and then they've also developed a kind of a man-made manufactured fiber and that's what you find a lot of times in like the fiber one bars, the granola bars that just have lots and lots, you know, nine grams of fiber in one granola bar or cereals that are extremely high in fiber even though they're not necessarily made of 100% whole grains. Yogurt that's high in fiber. Um, they added it to almost anything possible and that type of manufactured and added fiber does not lower the glycemic index of foods. So that's not necessarily a, a great, consistent, and accurate guide to go by when you're looking to see if a food is low in glycemic index. Another question is, you know, a lot of times people get confused, you know, is there a certain number of carbohydrate when I'm reading the nutrition facts label? What gram carbohydrate should I kind of, what's the target goal when I'm looking at a food, a portion size? Should it be less than five grams, less than 10 grams? What if there's 20 grams, but it's a whole grain? And a point that I do like to make is it's always good to look at the nutrition facts label, and that can be helpful. Um, however, those where carbohydrate is broken down into sugars and also fiber. However, under sugars, it does not differentiate between a natural sugar and an added sugar. And the body treats and digests natural sugars and added sugars completely different. And therefore, that's not, it's also not an accurate target to go by. It is good if it's lower in sugar and it is higher in fiber if we know it's coming from a natural source. But I would say the most important thing to look at when you're looking at a food um, a nutrition label is to go to the bottom where the ingredients are listed. Now, as few ingredients as possible to be listed are better because that means that it's a fairly natural food. That little has been added to it. It's not been refined and processed. Um, if you do see those words refined and processed, that right there is a red flag that it probably has a fairly high glycemic index. So you want to look for a whole grain, whether it's wheat, rye, barley, corn, those are all oats. Those are all good whole grains to look for, and that should be one of the first few ingredients listed on the label. And finally, um, another question that I've been asked is, the low glycemic index the same as a low carbohydrate diet? So for example, if I just follow the Adkins diet, will that be sufficient? And um, no, they are not the same. Glycemic index is not the same as a low carbohydrate diet. Like I said, we are adjusting more the quality of the type of carbohydrates as opposed to the quantity of the carbohydrates that we're eating. So we're looking for specific types of carbohydrates. Also, you have to be wary of a lot of low carbohydrate or sugar-free foods have sugar alcohols added to them and those are essentially malabsorbed by our body and can cause a lot of abdominal discomfort and distress, gas bloating. So we like to advise you to stay away from sugar alcohols as much as possible, and that's very common in a lot of the diet products that are made for low-carbohydrate diets such as Atkins. 